Good evening, Hyperspinners. Today we're going to be talking about setting up the 3D NES, so get ready. Right guys, so uh, this isn't terribly new, but it is maybe about two years uh, old here. Uh, this is the 3D NES uh, emulator. It basically uh, modifies uh, the original look of the NES and it adds some 3D and it. It allows you to basically control uh, the angles, uh, you know, left or right or, uh, you know, vertical. Um, just to kind of get a different perspective. It's kind of cool. Uh, some of the graphics are a little uh, wonky, if you will. So uh, just kind of heads up there. And there are uh, multiple versions here. This is actually the, uh, the website where the emulator is. Uh, the version 2.0 uh, update is out, but you have to pay for it. It's, uh, it looks like there's it's $15. Uh, to me, it's totally not worth it, uh, you know, for what it is. So, you know, that's just my opinion. Uh, you know, you, you guys might be totally into this, uh, which which is cool. So, uh, just to mention that some of these games uh, do not work on the uh, 1.0 schema. And for instance, this uh, the Zelda game here that's previewed here in the trailer uh, only works on the 2.0 uh, version. So, uh, just a heads up there. There is approximately 70 games that are uh, working in version one. I'm not sure on the compatibility on version two, uh, but I believe it is uh, more than the 70 games. Uh, but what we're going to be doing is setting up a version, uh, you know, 1.0 essentially. And, uh, you know, it might be like 1.4, whatever the latest uh, version 1 is, uh, is what I ultimately set up. And the uh, Rocket Launcher module uh, only supports the uh, 1.0 schema. So, uh, you know, take it for what it's worth. If you want the 2.0 version, uh, you know, go ahead and grab that. It just might uh, not run 100% with the uh, auto hotkey that is uh, supported. So let's kind of get started here. So what I'll do is I'll include the uh, the 3DM profiles, which is sort of the guts behind all of this. So what you'll want to do is you'll drop your uh, game uh, files in a folder, and you'll drop these 3DM uh, files in that same folder with the same naming convention. So I'm using the official uh, NES database. So you really shouldn't have to modify any of the names that I'll be providing here. But uh, you know, if you've done some custom work on your, your game names, then you will have to modify it. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started here. And first things first, uh, like always, we're going to open up HyperHQ. You're going to push that main menu wizard, and you're going to type in 3D NES uh, with space in between, and uh, all capitalized. And you'll select the sub wheel option. After you've done that, you're going to go to this wheel settings tab. You're going to select 3D NES, and you're going to put NES, comma 3D N in the extensions uh, field. Everything else comes default. You're going to modify the wheel tab based on your settings so that it all looks streamlined. I've got 0.15 navigation of themes. I've got parent videos, and then animate out default themes as well as reload background and we're going to move on to video uh, you know if, if you guys want wheels only go ahead and select that uh, i've got full media on the nes so i don't need to do that next video is blank sound is default to everything and your special art again i've got a uh, banner at the bottom and as well as at the top uh, it looks really crisp uh, so I keep these activated, A, B, and C, and that's it on HyperHQ. Next, we're going to go to Rocket Launcher UI. You're going to find the 3D NES is uh, displaying here now, and your main settings. I've got everything set to default. If you haven't seen my Rocket Launcher three-part series, definitely check that out to uh, mirror the use global settings that I've got. Uh, skip checks is set to false. 
bezels I've got set to uh, true essentially, but that's uh, my use global settings. And that is it for that tab. Uh, oh yeah, so the emulators tab. So basically you'll put in the uh, path to your games. You'll push the little plus sign and your default emulator. You're going to push the magnifying glass and you're going to select 3D NES. Uh, normally, I go to global first to show you guys how to set that up. So I'm going to do that first now. Uh, the global uh, settings tab here under uh, emulators, I'm going to find uh, 3D NES, uh, which is at the top. I'm going to go ahead and double click that. If you don't see that, go ahead and push the plus sign, type in 3D NES, and then put in the path to your emulator, which is this 3D NES Pro. Your ROM extensions are going to be 7Z, NES, FDS, ZIP, and 3DN. And then your module is going to be your 3D NES module. I believe that comes default uh, as well with your rocket launcher setup. But I will include that in the FTP uh, under the same folder structure uh, under rocket launcher uh, modules folder. So we're going to go ahead and close that out. And we are almost done with this setup, guys. And there's modules, so we're going to click the uh, little, well, first the notes. So it tells you basically you need those 3DN files uh, for the proper 3D support. And it looks like uh, turn on 7Z support in the UI, this will break. Okay, so basically you can't have 7Z on. Uh, I don't have that on, so that's why I didn't have that problem. I'm actually glad I, I read that uh, now. Next, we've got the Edit Global Module Settings. We're going to click that. I've got full screen uh, set to default. Uh, what you're going to want to do is uh, leave that there, because when you launch a game, it's going to show a bezel, uh, which is pretty nice. And when I launch the databases here, looks like there's 70 games. Uh, that you'll have available in terms of the 3DNs. Uh, I won't have the game games themselves. You'll have to find those or use the ones that you already have. And then we're going to launch the emulator to kind of show you what it's all about. All right, so here's the emulator. Um, I've got a bezel that uh, runs wraps around this when you launch a game. Uh, I can show that briefly. And uh, yeah, here, here it is. So uh, basically what we're going to do is we're just going to go to settings. You are going to modify, uh, you know, the graphics drop down if you'd like. Basically, the only thing that I found was if you select high, uh, you know, the colors are a little darker, but uh, I really didn't see a huge difference here. Uh, the most important tab here is your input. You're going to select player one and then player two after you've set things up and you're just going to click in here and then press the button of your choosing and you can see the rotate left and right so basically those are my left and right shoulder buttons i've got zoom in and zoom out uh, you know it, basically it's you know whatever you really like here um, also rotating so you've got rotation left right up down and then you've got zoom in and zoom out so that is that and you'll want to do that for player two as well um since i'm in here i might just change that to uh one of the other settings that i've got there we go all right uh so rendering i've got set to side and front all that was default uh, the editor, I've got all that as default. Uh, this basically just works out of box. All you have to do is set up the controls and everything will just be uh, groovy here. So I'm on the 1.4.0 uh, version and that is it guys. So I'm going to go ahead and close the emulator out. You've got everything set up and saved. Uh, it will remember your settings uh, as soon as you X out of it. Uh, so you don't have to worry about pressing save in that general tab. So what else do I want to show you? The uh, media, if you guys haven't already seen the video that I posted uh, just yesterday on the system link, uh, I, I guess, process, uh, what's going to be really easy for you guys, if you haven't already set up your classic uh, arcade 
wheels. There's about 10 of them. Um, you're not going to basically be using a large amount of uh, data. Uh, I mean, it's going to save you, I don't know, 100 gigs maybe? I have no idea. Um, instead of just copying the main folder and the Nintendo folder on the uh, media, uh, you're just going to be creating these system links, which basically links you to the source data and uh, you're going to find that it saves you, you know, you know just the 3D NES uh, video folder and that saves me six gigs there. I, I know, you know, that might not be a lot, but when we're talking a uh, number of systems uh, across the board, uh, you know, that's a, a couple of games. So uh, just kind of heads up there. It also allows you to just instantly sync all of your media so you don't have to worry about finding those 70 games um, so you will have to end up doing that you'll create those uh, system links but i'll include the 3dn uh, files as well as the uh, database folder or or just file and uh, that will save you guys a, a ton of time so i've also done that with the sound in the themes folder uh, basically i you know i'm using all the same stuff there images uh, same letters, uh, you know, the genre, there really isn't any genres with this XML, uh, so unfortunately I, I won't be including any of that. Uh, the pointer I created, uh, I will be including that, and uh, yeah, so that, that is the 3D NES, and what I'll do is I will try launching this uh, from the uh, Rocket Launcher UI, just so you can see what the uh, bezel looks like. So, uh, get ready. Loading game. Loading complete. So there you have it, guys. And uh, hope that answers all your guys' questions. I believe this was also a uh, requested tutorial. Uh, I've got a lot of them, so bear with me. I'm trying to get through them as quick as I can. So uh, until next time.